Alright, welcome back everybody. In this video, we're going to be looking at how messages are stored in Greylog. Greylog indices. When we receive a message in Greylog, we eventually need to store it somewhere, and that's what index sets are for. We send messages to index sets for storage. You can configure new or edit existing index sets by going to system and indices. We have three index sets by default. The default index set will store any message we input into Greylog by default. You can create your own index set by clicking the Create Index Set button. Now each index set in Greylog is really a group of one or more indexes. When the index set receives a message, it will write the message to the current write index. You can check what index is the current write index by clicking the index set and finding the index that has the active write index flare next to it. In this example, Greylog underscore one is our active write index. Now for a number of reasons, we don't want these indexes to grow too big. To solve this, we rotate the current write index with a new index. This is called the rotation strategy and we can configure this uniquely for each index set to rotate the current write index after some criteria is met. I'll be going over this in more detail later. We also have the retention strategy for the index set. This will determine what to do with old indexes after some criteria is met. Okay, so there's some other settings in the index set options that in order to understand, we need to dive a little bit deeper into how Greylog is actually storing this data. When the index receives the message, it must determine what shard to allocate this message to. If we have one shard, all the documents in this index are allocated to this one shard. If we have multiple shards, all the documents in this index are split between each shard. So why do we do this? Well, shards are the way we horizontally scale our open search database between multiple nodes. If we create a cluster of open search nodes, we can then split our index onto each node using shards. So if I have three nodes and three shards, one on each node, one third of my index is on each node. This way I can read and write to the index simultaneously using multiple servers. And that brings us to our first option, index shards. From my research, the general rule is one shard per node. So if you're running a single node, set this to one. There is a couple reasons why you might want to set this higher, and I can't go into every single one. The main one is if you're planning on growing. If you have any hint that you might be scaling this out in the future, you should set this number of shards higher. Probably three is a good place to start. Remember, shards is how we scale our index between multiple nodes, so we need at least one shard for each node. The issue is changing the number of shards after the index is created is not an easy task for the server. If you have a small index, it might not be that bad, but massive indexes can really hammer your resources when you change the number of shards per index. So it's recommended to avoid changing the number of shards after the index is created. Now each shard on each node only has a portion of the index, not the entire index. So if I lose one of my nodes, then I just lost access to all the data on that node. This is where you would set index replicas to one. So shards will be backed up to other nodes, so in the event of a failure, we don't lose any data. Replicas should always be set to zero for a single node because they don't even work on a single node. Now, if that wasn't enough to take in, we're still not done yet. There's actually still one more layer to this, and that is segments. Segments actually write the data to the disk. Now, how segments and Lucene inverted indexing all works is really going down the rabbit hole here, but for the very basics, Lucene is a search and indexing library that is the core of what Elasticsearch and OpenSearch are built on. Elasticsearch took Lucene and made it scalable. When new data comes into a shard, it will create a new segment. After some time, Lucene will determine, okay, I have enough segments, let's merge them all back into one segment. This is done automatically in the background or by sending an API call to OpenSearch to force merge of all these segments back into one segment. So now that we kind of understand what segments are for, let's look at two of the options that we have for segments in the index set. Max number of segments. This is the number of segments you are left with after you merge your segments. One is the default, and I would say most people are using one. Most of the documentation suggests that having more than one segment will slow down searches and consume more server resources. 
My only theory as to why you would set this higher is if you had like a hard drive RAID set up with multiple disks, then it might be possible to read and write to two segments simultaneously, but I've never tested that. That's just a theory of mine. So if you know any reason why you would want to set this higher than one, please leave a comment. I'd be interested to know. Disable index optimization after rotation. When we rotate the index due to our rotation strategy being met, we automatically merge all the segments. This option is basically a hack to help with bad hardware. Because merging segments can be resource heavy, so if we just leave however many segments were in place when the rotation happens, it doesn't have to work as hard. Now, going back to the last point, I did say that having more segments do take more resources, so this might be just a really rare situation, so I wouldn't worry about this unless you're having a very specific issue. Field type refresh interval. This is the interval from when the data comes into Greylog to when it's available for search. If I set this to 5 seconds, then you'll have a gap of 5 seconds between when the message came in and it's available for searching. If you don't need data available right away for searching, then setting this higher could possibly help manage load. Okay, index rotation configuration. Alright, let's start with the easiest here, index message size. So this is really straightforward. You are telling Greylog to rotate the index after the index reaches a certain size. We ideally want to keep the shard size between 20 to 50 gigabytes in size. So setting the index to 30 gigabytes will rotate the index and the shard at the same time. So this will result in 30 gigabyte shards. So if we have two shards, then we need to double the max index size to 60 gigabytes so we can achieve 30 gigabytes per shard. Okay, the index time rotation strategy. This will rotate the index after a certain amount of time. Now this is a good option if you need to keep your logs for a certain amount of time due to compliance reasons. But we still need to keep our shard size in mind. So we need to do a couple calculations to figure that out. I took the hourly average size of all my daily log data. In this case, on average, I was receiving around 4.1 gigabytes per hour. I then divided that by 30 to figure out how many hours it would take to reach 30 gigabytes. That gave me an index time size of about 7 hours to reach 30 gigabytes. If we had two shards, then we need to double the time in the index to 14 hours. Now, index time is good for compliance reasons because when we go to tell Greylog when to start deleting old indexes, we know exactly how much time each index consists of. So if I want to store one year of data before I start deleting old indexes, I need to tell Greylog to keep 1,251 indexes in this case. After we reach 1,252, it will delete the oldest index at every index rotation period. Okay, index message count. This method is simply rotating the index after we receive a certain amount of messages. Much like index time, we need to do some calculations to figure out how many documents it will take to reach a 30 gigabyte shard size. Okay, the next setting, index time size optimizing. And this strategy is pretty new, and unfortunately it's so new there's not a lot of documentation on it yet. I'll link a post that I started on the Greylog community forums about this setting in the description. But really, all it's doing is rotating the index on demand when the shard size gets to around 20 to 50 gigabytes in size. So you don't have to do any of these calculations or worry about anything, and this is really the best option if you don't care about any of this and you just want to set it and forget it. For the retention strategy, I would set the maximum slider at the number of days when you want the retention strategy to activate. For the minimum slider? Well, I have a couple questions on that one myself, so for now, I would set it a couple days lower than the maximum, but definitely follow the thread for the final solution on that one. Okay, our last option is the retention strategy, and we have three options, delete, close, or do nothing. Uh, delete is what most people will use, and this will just start deleting the old indexes after the max number of indexes is reached. Close index will basically keep data on the disk, but not allow you to read or search this index anymore. I think a use case for this would be to close the index and then have another tool outside of Greylog archive this index that was closed. In the commercial version of Greylog, they actually have an archive option in here. So this close index might be kind of a hackish attempt at archiving. Do nothing, does nothing. It won't do anything to the old indexes. They'll be left in place and Greylog will keep creating new indexes until you run out of hard drive space. 
Okay, that's all I have for index sets. This has been a journey for me. This is probably one of my most researched videos, and I hope you got a lot of information out of it. Thank you again for watching.